Welcome you all back to our integrated science class. We've been looking at the topic electricity. In our last section, we started talking about electric power and energy. And we concluded by starting to look at calculations under electric power and energy. And we looked at just one calculation. Today we're going to look at more examples. And I believe that by the time that we are through with the examples, you'll be able to get the understanding and the concept of the calculations under electric power and energy. Before we look at our next question let's have a quick recap of the equations we came across so as a recall these are some equations that we have already come across We, from Ohm's law, we know that the voltage is the current times the resistance. We also say electric current is equal to charge over time. So we say charge is the current times the time. We also say that work done is the charge times the voltage. And I said if you do this substitution, your work done is also equal to I V T. The current times voltage times time. And we said power is equal to work done over time. And so if you do this substitution, then your power becomes IV. Because if you do this substitution, the time will cancel out and then we left with IV. He also said that from V equals IR, if you substitute IR in place of V, it becomes I times IR. That gives I squared R. And then similarly, if you rather make I the subject here, your I becomes V on R. So if you substitute V on R here, it becomes V on R times V. And that gives V squared over R. And then we also said that electric energy is the power times time. And then we also talk about cost of electricity. I say cost of electricity is equal to the electric energy in kilowatt hour times the unit cost of electricity. So these are some of the equations we've come across uh, under electric power and energy. So we're going to continue by looking at question two. Question two. In our last session, we looked at question one. So today we're continuing by looking at question two.
factor question two says 100.0 joules work is done to transfer 5.0 coulomb charge between two points calculate the voltage across the two points calculate the voltage across the two points let's look at the solution as part of the solution you're supposed to come out with the data or the information from the question so from the question we have the work that is done this 100.0 joules work is done and then we also have the charge is it to transfer 5.0 coulomb charge between two points so those are the two informations given from the question so we have the work that is done and we also have the charge so you have work done w as 100.0 joules we also have the charge charge is represented as q that is equal to the 5.0 coulomb and from this two information you've been asked to calculate the voltage so we are looking at the voltage voltage so you ask yourself from this set of equations which of them will you use to solve for v so it should be an equation that connects w q and v and if you look at from the equation three it said that the work done is equal to the charge times the voltage so we have W, we have Q, we are, we are supposed to do for V. So we make V the subject. So using equation 3, we make V the subject. So we have work done W to be equal to the charge Q times the voltage V. You're looking for V, so we divide both sides by Q. You do that, your V equals W on Q. So our W is 100 and then the Q is 5 and then when you point that on your calculator that is 100 divided by 5 that will give you 20 now the unit of voltage is root so that will give you 20 volts oh, because the other values are recorded to one decimal place. You also record this to one decimal place. So that's 20 volts or 20.0 volts. So that is for question two. So let's look at question three. Okay, so question three is this the power generated by an electric appliance of internal resistance of 10 ohms is 1000 watts the power generated by an electric appliance of internal resistance of 10 ohms is 1000 watts calculate the a current passing through current passing through the appliance and then B voltage of the appliance so the solution 
and said anytime you start with your solution you're supposed to come out with the information from the question so from the question we have the power generated and we also have the resistance so you have two sets of information the power that are generated as well as the resistance of the appliance and uh, this 10 ohms so this unit ohms is a unit for resistance so it means that this value the 10 ohms is the resistance and then power is measured in watt so the thousand watts here represents the power generated so our resistance or the resistance given in the question. Resistance is represented as R is equal to 10 ohms. And then the power that was generated, P, is equal to 1000 watts. So question, the first question A, is asking to determine the current passing through the appliance. So current I. So we have the resistance, we have the power. You're looking for the current. So here, you're supposed to look for an equation that connects power, the resistance, and the current. So an equation connecting power, resistance, and then current. So if you come back to our equations, these are the three equations involving power. The one that uh, links the power to the resistance and the current is equation 7. So in equation 7, we have the power, we have the current, and we have the resistance. So from here, we have, from the question, we have the power given, we also have the resistance given, so we can make the I the subject. So equation 7 is equal to the current squared times the resistance. Now if you make, if you divide both sides by R, the R can say you have your I squared to be equal to P over R. So you have I squared is equal to P over R. You are looking for I, but this I squared. So what do you do? You take square roots of both sides. You take square root of I squared. Square root is the same as to the power half. So this is I squared all to the power half. So this will cancel this half. So you get I. So for you to find I, you take square root of both sides. And your I becomes square root of P over R. Now if you do a, your substitution, your i therefore becomes square root of p, which is 1000, over r, which is 10. That gives square root of 100. This zero cancel that, so that's square root of 100. You point down your calculator, square root of 100, that would be equal to 10. Current is measured in amperes, so you add the unit A, amperes. So that is the current passing through the appliance. The question B is asking for the voltage of the appliance. Voltage V, question mark. Now, there are two ways you can solve for the voltage. You can use the Ohm's law because from the question, you have the resistance given and we have also calculated for the current. So using equation one, you multiply the current that we have calculated by the resistance that is given in the question and that will give you the answer. The authentic approach is to use the equation that connects the resistance which is given in the question, the power 
and then the voltage. So we have power given, we have the resistance, so you can make the V the subject. Or you can also use equation 6. We have power, you've calculated for current, so you can look for voltage. So from here, you have three options. Either I use equation 1, that is V is equal to IR, or you can use equation 6, and then make V the subject, and or you can also use equation 8 and then make the, the subject. So any of these three equations should be able to give you the answer that is required. So of these three equations, the simpler one will be equation 1. So I'm going to use equation 1. It's equal to IR, which implies that V is equal to our current is 10, and then the resistance is also 10. So that will be equal to 100. Our, volt, our voltage is in volts. So that is 100 volts. As I say, alternatively, P is equal to IV. So if you make V the subject, your V equals P on I which implies that V will be equal to our P with a thousand, the I with a stem. So that will also give you 100 volts. Or if you go and use P equals V squared on R, you make V that's so you still get the 100 volts. So that is for question three, question three. Next question is question four. The question four, is this an electric heater? It's rated two kilowatts. Two twenty volts. So that's the power rating of the electric heater. Two kilowatts, two twenty volts. And from this rating you have to calculate the resistance of the core of the heater and then the current that flows through the heater. The solution. So from the, from the rating of the electric heater, we have two set of values. Two kilowatts, 220 volts. Watts. So that represents what? The power. Volts. That represents the voltage. So from the rating of the electric meter, we have the power and then we have the voltage. So we have power. P to be equal to 2 kilowatts. If you look at our previous calculations, your power has to be in watts, but this giving in 
kilowatt. So it means that you have to convert the kilowatt into watt. If you remember what I said, in, when we started talking about electric power, I said that in converting watts to kilowatts, or uh, if you are converting kilowatt to watt, you multiply by thousand. And then if you are converting watt to kilowatt, you divide by thousand. So if you're going to convert kilowatts to watt, you're going to multiply by one thousand. I also told you that this key that kilo, kilo means thousand. So it becomes two times thousand watts. So this is equal to two times thousand, which gives you two thousand watts. So that is the power in watts. The power in watts. And then we also have the voltage V giving us 220 volts. And then based on this information, you have to calculate for the current, no, the resistance, that is E, and then the current. So question A, the resistance. Ah. Okay, so we have power, we have voltage, we are looking for resistance. So you should look for an equation that connects the three parameters. That's the power, the voltage, and the resistance. And from equation 8, that's the equation that connects the three. So power equals the voltage squared over the resistance. We know the power, we know the voltage, so we make R the circuit. So we're going to make use of equation 8. So from equation 8, the power is equal to V squared over R. If you make, we are looking for R. So if you make R the circuit, your R becomes V squared over P. With 220, but it's V squared. So you have to square that over the power with this. 2000. So when you point that your calculator, that will give you 24.2 ohms. Okay, so that is the resistance. Now for the B, you also calculate for the current. So which equation will you use? You can use equation one, voltage equals IR. From the question, we have the voltage, we've calculated for the resistance. So you can make I the subject. Alternatively, you can also use equation six, P equals IV. We have the P, we have the V, so you can make I the subject. And then you can also decide to use equation 7. P equals I squared R. We have the P, we've calculated for R, so you can make I the subject. So, from equation 1, V equals I R. You make I the subject, your I becomes V on R. Our V is 220, and then the R we calculated is 24.2. It means that the current becomes 9.091 amperes. That is to three decimal places. Alternatively, if you use equation six, for 
my equation says P equals I V. If you make I the subject, your I becomes P on V. Our P is 2000. And then the voltage is 220. The point that does also give you the same thing 0, 9, 1 to 3 decimal places. So our current is 9.091 amperes. Okay, so any of this equation should give you the same answer. So that is for question 4. is a 2000 watt electric fire is used for 10 hours what is the cost at one cd per kilowatt hour kilowatt hour so from the question what do you have the information provided you have what that is a power hours so this is also the time so you have the power and you have the time and the question is asking to calculate for cost so we're looking at cost of electricity you're supposed to calculate for cost of electricity and from the equations all right so cost of electricity is calculated as energy times the unit cost so it means that for you to calculate for the cost of the electricity used you need the energy and then you also need the unit cost and the unit cost is what is given at one cd per kilowatt hour so we calculate for our energy which is supposed to be in kilowatt hour and then whatever we get we use to multiply the unit cost that was given so from the question we have the power p to be equal to 2000 watts and it said that in calculating for energy which is to be used in calculating for, for cost of electricity your power is supposed to be in kilowatts so in this case you convert the watt into kilowatt because the energy we are going to calculate has to be in kilowatt hour uh, we said that energy is power times time. So here, yeah, your power is in kilowatts and then the time is in hours. So we convert the power from watt into kilowatts. So here, yeah, how do you convert watt into kilowatt? In our previous question, I spoke about that. In that case, we divide by 1000. So this is equal to 2000 divided by 1000. And that gives two kilowatts so this is the power in kilowatts the time t was given as 10 hours so as i said the question did he ask to calculate for energy but without the energy you can calculate for the cost of electricity so we first of all calculate for the electric energy e that we don't know. I said from equation 9, our electric energy is equal to power times time. Power times time. So using equation 9, E equals P times T. The power in kilowatts is 2 kilowatts. And then the time in hours is 10 hours. When you do that, that gives it 20 kilowatts hour. So that is our electric energy. Now we have our electric energy. So we can calculate for our cost of electricity. From the question, we also have this as the unit cost. It says at 1 CD per kilowatt hour. So that is the unit cost. So we have our unit cost. So unit cost.
that is a U is the one C. And then we are to find the total cost. So total cost. Electricity does a C, but as I said earlier, on, we're going to use equation 10. Your total cost is equal to the electric energy in kilowatt hour times the unit cost. So, our cost of electricity is the E times the U, that will be 20 times the 1 CD. And that gives 20 cities. So the total cost of using the electric fire for 10 hours is equal to 20 cities. It's equal to 20 cities. Okay, question six. Is this an electric kettle rated 240 volts draws a current of three amperes? An electric kettle rated 240 volts draws a current of three amperes. If the kettle is used for two hours per day, calculate the A. Energy that will be consumed by the kettle for a week. And then the total cost of using the kettle for a week. So that is question six. Let's look. So from the question, we have 240 volts, which represents the voltage. So you have the voltage V to be equal to. 240 volts. So the kettle draws a current of 3 amperes. So that's the current. So the current I is equal to 3 amperes. If the kettle is used for 2 hours per day, 2 hours per day. So this is the time 
that the kettle is used for each day. So every day, the kettle is used for two hours. If you look in at the question, you are calculating, you're not calculating the energy for a day. We are also not calculating the total cost for a day. We are rather calculating the energy and the total cost for a week. So you've got to look for the time, the total time that the kettle will be used for a week. Every day, the kettle is used for two hours. And we know that in a week, we have seven days. So if you want to find the, the time, the total time that the kettle will be used for one week, we just multiply the number of days in a week by the number of hours the kettle is used for each day. So that will be seven times two, and that will give you 14 hours. So total time, for a week, will be equal to seven times the two hours and that will be equal to 14 hours. So the time for, the total time for one week, the total time for using the kettle for one week is seven times two and that will be equal to 14 hours, 14 hours. Okay, so now let's look at the actual question. So question A, question A says you should look for the energy that will be consumed by the kettle for a week. Energy that will be consumed by the kettle for a week. So you look for the energy. But before you calculate for energy, we know that our energy is equal to power times time. So it means that before you can look for your energy, with this power times time, you need the power. We've determined the total time from one week. So you are also supposed to determine the power. The power. And from the question, we have the voltage and the current. So you have to look for an equation that connects the power, the current, and the voltage. And that is equation six. So we're going to use equation 6 to calculate for the power. After calculating for the power, then we can use uh, the power we calculated to look for the energy using equation 9. So first of all, we're going to look for power. Even though the question really asks to calculate for power, that's the first thing you do. So our power, we don't know. By using equation 6. Power is equal to current times voltage. You do your substitution. The current given is 3. And then the voltage is 240. And that will give you 720 watts. 720 watts. Okay. Now, I've also said that in calculating for energy, which is in kilowatt R, you've got to convert your power into kilowatts. So, how do you convert watts into kilowatts? As I say, divide it by 1,000. So, if you divide this by 1,000, that will give you 0.72 kilowatts. So that is the power in kilowatt. So we can look for our energy now, our electric energy. Okay, so in calculating our electric energy, we know that that is from equation nine. Energy is equal to the power So our energy is equal to power times time. Our power here is 0 0.72 kilowatts. And then the time is uh, 14 hours. And when you 
found it, that gives you 10.08 kilowatts. Ah. So the electric energy consumed by the kettle for a week is equal to 10.08 kilowatts. Ah. The last question, the D part says, you should look for the total cost for using the kettle for a week. From the question, if the unit cost is, if the unit cost is, I say, one point five zero cities. Unit cost. Is one point five zero cities. So the total cost that the C Irana but the total cost is the energy in kilowatt hour times the unit cost. So our energy is ten point zero eight. That's what we had in the calculation times the unit cost, which is 1.50. And that gives 15.12 cities. So that is the total cost for using the kettle for one week, 15.12 cities. of electricity that is electric power and energy is question seven question seven
Okay, so the, this is the last question we're looking at. It says that an electric hairdryer rated 250 volts has an internal resistance of 20 ohms. If the unit cost of electricity is 1.20 Ghana cities, what would be the bill for three days for using the ground for 390 minutes per day? Per day. Okay. So the solution to the question. From the question, we have 250 volts, which represents the voltage. We have 20 ohms representing the resistance. We have the unit cost given. And then the, the time for using the dryer for each day. And then based on that, we have to calculate the, the total cost for, or the total bill for using the drive for three days. So we have our voltage. To be equal to 250 volts. We have the resistance. Up to be 20 ohms. We have unit cost US one point two zero six. We have time. So total time for using drive. For three days, the time that will be equal to seven, three days, so three times the number of minutes per day, which is 390 minutes. So this is one one seven zero minutes. Uh, we also know that our time should be in in hours. So you convert that time in hours. How do you convert minutes to hours? You divide it by sixty. So in converting many to hours, you divide by 60. So when you divide the 1170 by 60, that gives 19.5 hours. So that's the total time for using the kettle for three days, 19.5 hours. So these are the informations from the question. Now we can now look for the in solving this stepwise, we are looking for total cost, which involves the energy and the unit cost. So before we calculate for total cost, you need the energy. We also know that to calculate for energy, you need the power. So first of all, we're going to look for power. After getting power, we look for the energy, and then we can calculate for the total cost, just like in the previous question. And from the question, we have the voltage and the resistance. So you have to look for the power, and we use the equation that connects the power, the voltage, and the resistance. And that's equation 8, power, voltage, and resistance. So using equation 8, we look for the power. So the power, P, we don't know. By using equation 8, power is V squared over R. The voltage given is 250, you square this, divide by the resistance which was given as 20. So 
So it implies that our P becomes three one two five watts. So that is the power in watts. So you're going to use to calculate for the energy. So you convert the watts into kilowatts by dividing by thousand. So if you divide this by thousand, that gives three point one two five kilowatts. Okay. So that is the power in kilowatts. We can look for the energy now. So energy. Energy consumed. For three days. I said our energy is equal to the power times the time. The power in kilowatts is three point one two five. And then the time in hours, we are 19.5 hours. And now give 60.93. Seven five kilowatt R. Okay, so now we can calculate for the total cost. So total cost for three days. said that the total cost is calculated as the energy in kilowatts times the the energy in kilowatts are times the energy uh, times the unit cost uh, energy is 60.9375 and the unit cost is 1.20 Ghanaian cities So that gives seventy three point one three Ghanaian cities. So seventy three point one three Ghanaian cities. So that's the total cost of using the electric dryer for three days. We have concluded the calculations under electric power. The next topic we're looking at under electricity is transformers. 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 If you go through the past question, you come across what is a transformer. So the first thing you've got to know under this topic is what is a transformer. A transformer. Now, so a transformer is simply a device which is able to increase or decrease the voltage of and AC. When we start looking at electricity, we look at types of current, and we say we have two types of current, direct current and alternating current. So a device that is able to change the magnitude of the voltage of 
an alternating current. That device is what we call a transformer. So, in simpler terms, a transformer is used, or uh, is a device which is used to increase or decrease the voltage of an alternating current. So, a transformer. It's a device which changes the magnitude of the voltage. An alternating current. So, a device which changes the magnitude of the voltage of an alternating current is what we call a transformer. As I said, in simpler terms, we say that is a transformer. is a device a device which increases or decreases Voltage of an alternating current. Okay. So instead so of saying that a transformer is a device which changes the magnitude of the voltage of an alternating current. So you can also say it's a device which increases or decreases the voltage of an alternating current. Let's take note of some of this information under transformers. A transformer consists of two cores, which we refer to as the primary core and the secondary core. So a transformer consists of two cores, the primary core and the secondary And these two cores are wound around uh, inner core, which is made up of an ion. So, which are wound around a closed ion core. very soon or shortly we'll be looking at the diagram of the types of transformers so you look you see uh, how a transformer looks like so what, how, what the ion core is and then what the primary and the secondary cores are now in most transformers you have the ion core laminated Laminated where I say okay, so the ion core 
is laminated. When I say iron core is laminated, it means that the iron core is surrounded by insulator. And this is to help reduce heat losses. Heat losses. So, to reduce or minimize. Okay, so the iron core is laminated, surrounded by an insulator. Uh, he says insulators are not good conductors of heat. Uh, for that matter, uh, they are not good conductors of electricity. So it will reduce heat that will be lost. As compared to if a solid metal block is used. It's used. Okay. Now this arrangement or this design ensures that a maximum magnetic flux is produced for a given current. So the design ensures that a maximum magnetic flux is produced for a given current. Magnetic flux, a term you come across under electromagnetism. I told you that. Now let's look at the types of transformers. So types of transformers. So we have two types of transformers. We have what we call the step up transformer. And then we also have step down. From the definition we said a transformer is a device which increases or decreases the voltage of an AC. So when it comes to step up, it means that it steps up the voltage. Stepping up the voltage means that it increases what the voltage. So a step up transformer simply increases what the voltage. And a step down transformer does the reverse. That is, it steps down or decreases the voltage. So let's look at each one of these. So step up transformer.
So this is a transformer each increases the voltage of an alternating current by decreasing the current. So, step up increases the voltage of an AC. A hard doesn't increase the voltage of the AC by decreasing the current. By decreasing the current. So, a transformer which increases the voltage of an AC by decreasing the current. So, that is what we call a step up transformer. In a step, in a step up transformer, I told you a transformer consists of two cores, the primary core and then the secondary core. In a step up transformer, you have the primary core, the number of primary core being smaller than the number of secondary core. It means that the number of secondary tents is higher than the number of the primary tents. The primary tents. So let's look at the diagram of a step up transformer. In your past question, you can't cross this. You've been asked to draw the diagram of a step up transformer or a step down transformer. So it's important you know how to draw this. Okay, so this is what we call the inner core. The inner core that I was referring to. So this is the inner core. And then these are the cores. This is what we call the primary core. And this is the secondary core. We have the primary voltage, or what we call the input voltage. And then we have the secondary voltage, or what we call the output voltage. Okay, so this is... Uh, a simplified diagram of a step up transformer. So you have a primary core, now you have the secondary core. We have the ion core. Well, I said this is what we call the primary voltage. We also call it the input voltage. We also have the secondary voltage. Which is also known as the output voltage. Okay, so this is simplified diagram for 
a step up transformer step up transformer now so for for a step up transformer for a step up transformer A if you look at the now these are the number of pens one two over here the pens are more so for a step up transformer the number of turns in the secondary core is more as compared to the number of turns in the primary core. So we said that the number of secondary turns is higher than or is greater than the number of primary turns. So yeah, the number of primary turns is lower than the number of secondary turns. In voltage, I said that the transformer, a step by transformer, increases the voltage. So, yeah, in terms of voltage, the voltage in the secondary is also higher than the voltage in the primary. So, this is the input voltage, this is the output. And we are saying that because the transformer increases the voltage, the voltage that is coming, that is the primary voltage, is stepped up, is increased. So the voltage that is coming out becomes higher. So the primary voltage is lower than the secondary voltage. So primary voltage is also lesser than the secondary voltage. The in terms of current, in terms of current, in terms of current, we say that the step out transformer increases the voltage by decreasing the current. So even though the voltage is increased here, the current is what? Reduced. That means the current, the amount of current that is coming in at the long run becomes what? Reduced. So it means that the current in the, in the primary core is higher than the current in the secondary core. So in terms of current, the primary current is greater than the secondary current. The secondary current. Okay, so this... Uh, the information for a uh, step up transformer a transformer which increases the voltage of an alternating current by decreasing the current it should also be able to state that or to be able to be able to draw the diagram of a step up transformer So from the knee, it steps down the voltage. Stepping down the voltage means that it decreases the voltage. So it is a transformer. Each decreases. The voltage. of an alternating current by increasing the current. Okay, so the primary function of a step down transfer is to decrease the voltage of an ac by so doing it also end up increasing the current increasing the current so let's look at a diagram of step down transformer
So this also has an inner core. So if you look at a diagram, it is the opposite. Here, the number of tens in the primary core is more than the number of tens in the secondary. So this, your primary core. Give the secondary core. the primary voltage now as I said the input voltage and you also have the secondary voltage the output voltage okay so this is a simplified diagram for uh, a step down transformer so it's same diagram the only difference is that for step down the number of tens in the primary core is higher than the number of tens in the secondary. If it is step up, then the number of tens in the primary is lower than the number of tens in the secondary. So, as a note, a step down transformer As I said, the number of primary tens in this case is greater than the number of secondary tens. And then it said a step down transformer decreases the voltage. So it means that if it is decreasing the voltage, then it means that the input voltage will be higher than the output voltage, meaning that the primary voltage is greater than the secondary voltage. So in terms of voltage, the primary voltage is greater than the secondary voltage. And uh, lastly, it said that as it is increasing, it is decreasing the voltage, it end up increasing the current. So it means that the current here is higher than the current here. So it means that the primary current is lower than the secondary current. So yeah, the current is lower than the primary current is lower than the secondary current. Secondary current. So we're going to end 
to this uh, section here. In our next section, we will look at energy losses in transformer. How energy can be lost in transformers. And we also look at ways of minimizing or reducing the energy losses. And then we continue to look at some calculations and the transformers. And so until we meet again, have a blissful day. Bye.